It's a pleasure to welcome uh, Gareth Southgate, coach of the English team, uh, for this uh, after-match press conference. And we're going to start the questions with this gentleman over there. Hi, Gareth. Um, just wondering if you can sum up that. There's obviously a lot of ups and downs and twists and turns. Yeah, I think um, we were talking before the match um, as a group of staff about the incredible games that England have been involved in and in tournaments and the twists and turns. So much happens in those big games that it's hard to uh, to take it all in. Um, <coughs> I thought it was a really high level of opponent um, who posed us problems in possession without creating too many clear-cut chances early in the game. Um, we managed to solve a lot of the problems they, they posed. They pressed us well. Um, throughout the game, we made too many mistakes in our third of the pitch. Um, and partly that was a consequence of their good pressure, but partly that was just um, you know errors by us. Um, got ourselves into the lead. Um, poor goal, obviously, set play. Uh, and then I think we responded, we had our best spell of the game really after that. We, we slightly changed the shape. Um, we managed to get Raheem into the pocket as a 10. And um, I felt that was the first period where re we really started to control the game. Um, scored, or thought we'd scored, of course, really fine margins. Um, and then we were still in control of the game until the, the second goal went in. And obviously the last two goals uh, you know, really difficult errors to account for. Um, so, incredibly proud that the players have given absolutely everything. Um, it's very painful for them. It's very painful for everybody. Um, but it was a night where we have learned so much, and you know, some individuals really stood out. Um, People like Declan Rice hadn't been in that sort of environment before. Ross Barkley, I thought, was really outstanding. Raheem. Um, so it, it was, uh, you know, tough to take in the end because um, you get to a semi-final, another semi-final, it should be a positive, but of course everybody leaves even more deflated. And um, uh, I can understand that, but I've got to look at the, the bigger picture of what the players have given me and... Um, the, the way that they've tried incredibly for their country. Okay, so let's do this gentleman here. Commiserations, I'm Jared. Um, looking at the tactics you deployed in Russia and what you're using now, don't you think um, the players are more suitable to what worked for them in Russia or you still trying one or two logics in the team? And secondly, Resting some of your key players, is it deliberate because we saw other teams using the same players who won um, the, in the Champions League? And is it a deliberate thing by you and the tactical formation as well? Thank you. Yeah, I, I think with the tactical, um, there were different stages in the game where we had to adapt and adjust. And um, uh, we used a system in, in Russia that was very successful for us, but also had had weaknesses with it so we've tried to evolve from that which we have in the last year um, in terms of the individual players um, I don't think they were ready to um, to be able to start the game um, Harry's just coming back from uh, eight, eight weeks a massive game in uh, in Madrid um, and um, we had a feeling the game could end up going to extra time, which is what, what happened. So he was on the field for the key part of the game. Uh, and Jordan wasn't fit enough to start. He only was past uh, able to play this morning, really. So um, so I, I think some of those decisions were slightly forced on us. We, we felt that it was the right way to approach the game. We also wanted some young players to have the experience of a night like tonight. Um, and they deserve the experience because they've been playing well. So, um, yeah, I, I think um, you, you can always look in hindsight at some of those decisions. But with everything that we, we dealt with, I think we started and finished with the right people on the pitch. Gareth, Gareth you've, you've said previously um, that, that John, John Stones needs to cut out the, to use your quote, stupid mistakes. Do you think it's a case that he's not learning 
as quickly as he should or, or is there mitigating circumstances tonight? Well, I think um, the, we've had some players that at the end of the season has been difficult in terms of the amount of minutes on the pitch and others who've had uh, the, the complete opposite. Um, so I think fatigue has played a part tonight. I think uh, a lack of match sharpness has played tonight. But, um, you know, I'm asking them to play in a way that puts them under huge pressure at the back. And um, if we didn't play that way, we wouldn't have got to the semi-finals we've got to. And we would never progress to be a top team because you saw the way Holland played as well. Um, they've also made a, a really poor error at the back. But, um, you know, I've got to be there to support John because um, he's, he's going to get criticism after tonight. But um, himself and Harry, the way we ask them to play, um, they take huge strain of the game on their shoulders and uh, they're, they're incredibly courageous to do that. So... Uh, that that's the way I believe they can play and we should play and we didn't lose because of how we want to play the the errors were um, uncharacteristic really um, and not not errors that we would make it, it wasn't risk it was just um, poor execution and uh, and fatigue it, certainly the last one was just fatigue so um, so I've got to not overreact to those things and um, I've, I've got to be there to support them in, in, in what's a difficult moment for everybody. <coughs> this side Hello Gareth, oh. just over here. Um, you, you will have seen some of the footage from last night with the fans in Porto, um, given that you'd asked them not to behave like that, what, what did you make of it? Um, well I haven't seen it, but um, I'm aware of it. Um, the, the saddest thing for me is that we have thousands upon thousands of fans who come here support us brilliantly and um, have the, the ability to enjoy themselves without causing offence to anybody else and without creating uh, uh, any problems and then we have a group who you know are an embarrassment and um, as an Englishman they're, they're not supporters of the team um, they reflect so poorly on us as a country and um, yeah there's, we, we don't associate ourselves with them at all okay one more the last one this gentleman you had, oh okay then this one the last question please for you Gareth after the Croatia semi-final there was a lot of talk about Luka Modric and England not necessarily possessing a player like that and tonight obviously De Jong's got man of the match he's run the game at times is there anything to read into that that again for sort of the second consecutive year we're looking at a, a, an opposition midfielder who's been able to dictate the tempo for a lot of the game uh, I think the key is that we have over the last two years tried to get the very best performances from the players we have and we've improved enormously as a team um, we've, we've progressed as a team Tonight we could be playing qualifying matches somewhere else. We weren't. We were playing another semi-final. It makes it more painful, but it was more important to be in a game like tonight ahead of next summer as well because that's the level of the teams. So at the moment, against some of the best teams, we're, we've not been able to get over the line in those two semi-finals. But um, um, we just have to keep working and adapting, and we've done that over the course of this competition, some young players have had tremendous experiences, so it's been hugely worthwhile for us. Um, but of course, we wanted to come here and win the trophy, and we haven't been able to do that. Thank you, Gareth Southgate. Thank you, everybody, and a good evening. Thank you.